Hi everyone, in this video from Count Backwards from 10, we're going to take a look at the EKG, how it works, and why we get the deflections we get in which leads we get them. This is part one of three. There are two more videos, again that are brief, that discuss the territories covered by each lead, the blood supply to all of them, and then the basics of reading an EKG and what it means for you in anesthesia. In the interest of keeping this video under 10 minutes, I've already laid out some of our models, so let's get started. We all remember at some point in the past taking our physics classes where we learned about Newtonian mechanics and vectors and we all said the same thing, why do I have to learn this stuff to be a doctor? And as it turns out, electrocardiograms are a great example of why they matter. As we all know, vectors are comprised of two things, a magnitude and a direction. But what we must also remember, that when dealing in two dimensions, a vector is also comprised of both an X and a Y component. And it's these components of each vector that we're going to look at in order to explain why we get the EKG deflections we get in the leads we get them. Everyone should remember at some point doing problems where a person on the ground throws a ball and you had to determine how high it would go and how far it would travel horizontally before it landed. And that's when we dealt with the X and Y components of our vectors. So first, let's take a look at our heart up here in the top of the screen. This is a coronal view where up here is the right atrium and down here is the left ventricle. Now remember that the heart produces an electrical signal starting here at the SA node traveling to the AV node, the left and right bundles, into the Purkinje fibers, thus creating an overall electrical vector signal that looks like this, top right to bottom left. So now we have this kind of floating X and Y axis here. We're just going to draw our heart vector right onto it and label it an H for heart. And we can see that the Y component, we've labeled this down, the Y component of the heart axis goes down, and the X component of the heart vector goes to the left. And we're going to use left, right, up, and down to describe these, and not positive and negative because we're going to use those terms to define our deflections. So the heart vector goes in a normal heart down and to the left. Next, we're going to take a look at the vectors created by our various leads and draw them onto our axis the same way. So lead one goes here from the right shoulder to the left shoulder. Lead two from the right shoulder to the foot. And lead three from the left shoulder to the foot. And like I said, we're just going to do the same thing. Draw them all right on here, just like this. One, two, and three. And then we're going to do the same thing with our axial vector leads, augmented vector leads, I apologize. And they start at the heart and they go out. AVL for left, AVR for right, and AVF for foot. And again, same thing. Straight down, AVF, up here. AVL, and up here, AVR. Now, what we're going to do is compare the vector components of each of the EKG leads to the vector components of the heart. Meaning, we're going to look at the direction of the X component of a lead and compare it to the direction of the X component of the heart vector and see if they are the same or different and fill in our chart. If the components are the same, the deflection should be positive. If the components are opposite or different, the deflection should be negative. And if one is the same and one is different, it should be isoelectric. So first, let's take a look at lead one. And we notice that the X component of lead one, it goes directly left, is the same as that of the heart. The heart's X component goes left, leads one component goes left, so they are the same. Now, Y component-wise, lead one does not have a Y component. It does not go up or down. It only goes left. So it does not exist. And therefore, the only component that lead one has is the same as that of the heart. And therefore, you should get a positive deflection in lead one. Lead two, X of lead two goes to the left. So they're the same as the heart. And y goes down same as the heart so you should have a positive deflection in lead two lead three as you can see the y components both go down y components both go down but 
the x component of lead 3 goes to the right, whereas the x component of the heart goes to the left, and therefore the x components are different. And in this case, you will get an isoelectric deflection in lead 3. Again, we'll do the same thing with our augmented vector leads. In ABL, we can see that the x components both go to the left. So the x component of the heart goes left, the x component of ABL goes left, so they're the same. But the y component, the heart goes down, and the x, I apologize, the y component of AVL goes up, and therefore they're different. And so again, in a normal EKG, AVL should have an isoelectric deflection. AVR, x component of AVR, as you can see, goes to the right, which is opposite that of the heart, and the y component goes up, and like we said, the heart goes down and to the left, AVR goes up and to the right, and therefore you should get a negative deflection in AVR. Finally, AVF, we can see that the Y components of both AVF and the heart go down, but AVF does not have an X component, doesn't exist. Same concept as lead one, and so the only component that it has is the same, and therefore the deflection in AVF in a normal EKG should be positive. And you'll notice because of lead 1 and lead AVF, those are the two we use to look at our axis. And that will be discussed in part 3 of this video on EKGs. But it has to do with the fact that they are purely X and purely Y components. While I can't pull a picture from Google to put it in here, I do encourage you to go and look up normal EKG and take a look just to confirm that these are the deflections you get in the leads that you get them in a normal electrocardiogram. Next, we're going to take a look at the precordial leads, V1 through V6. Rather than breaking it up into the X and Y components for this, we're just going to look at the similarity of the vector to the vector of the heart for each of the leads. The overall message here is the more similar to the heart vector, the more positive the deflection, the more opposite the heart vector, the more negative the deflection, and the more perpendicular to the heart vector, the more isoelectric the deflection. The hint for the V leads in a normal EKG is that two should be negative, two should be isoelectric, and two should be positive. So now we're gonna look at the top right, and this is going to be an axial view of the heart. And you should remember from anatomy that the heart is actually rotated in the chest such that the right side of the heart is more anterior and the left side is more posterior. Therefore, the SA node in the right side of the heart is going to be somewhere more anterior. And again, I know this is over-exaggerated, but it's to demonstrate the point. The AV node will be somewhere here, and then again, your left and right bundles and your Purkinje fibers. What this means is that the overall electrical vector of the heart in this plane goes anterior to posterior. And again, we'll just label it H for heart. And now in purple, we're just going to stick our V leads, our precordial leads on. And this dotted line here represents the sternum. Again, I know the heart isn't all the way on the left side of the sternum, but it's for the sake of illustrating the point. V1 is here on the right side of the chest, or sternum rather. V2 here on the left side of the sternum. V6 goes back here, and that's at the left mid axillary line, roughly. And V5, V4, and V3 come around. And again, we're gonna do the same thing. Our electrical signal for each of these, V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6. And again, we're just going to look at the vectors, compare them to that of the heart, look at the ones that are most going in the same direction, the ones that are most going in the least same direction, and label it that way. So, V5 and V6 look like they're going in the same direction as that of the heart, roughly, so they're both positive. V3 and V4, both perpendicular, therefore isoelectric, and V1 and V2 are both negative, as they're going in the opposite direction of the vector of the heart. I hope this clears up how the EKG turns out the deflections that it does and why it works on the basic scale. Please take a look at the next video in the series where we'll look at which leads correspond to which territories of the heart and their blood supply. As always, if you have any questions or topics you want covered, please feel free to write in to us. Otherwise, check in for the next video.